Beta Orionis, or Rigel as it's more famously known, is a blue supergiant star in the constellation of Orion, approximately 860 light years from Earth. Rigel is the brightest and second most massive star within 1000 light years. In our Brightest Stars series, we've already visited what I like to think of as the mother of our local area, but we've never looked at the actual system itself. Rigel is a star system of at least four stars. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video, we return to the blue supergiant star, one of the most famous stars of all. So, let's get to it. First things first, I've always pronounced the blue star Rigel, but you wouldn't be wrong if you pronounced it Rigel. In the north of England, we tend to use a sharper I sound than in the south or in the states, much like the country of Iran, or Iran as they say in the states. Battle it out with me if you like in the comments, but I'm sticking to what I know best. This is incidentally the fifth video I've made with Rigel as a protagonist. We've actually more or less completed the list of the top 25 brightest stars in our sky, but that's not where I intend to end the series. Indeed, the more we look in detail at each of these stars, the more fascinating indeed they become. Let me know in the comments which one of the list here you would like to see another chapter added. I'm thinking Capella as it's now the oldest and most outdated video. I think our Vega Astro Channel's videos invariably do best when we're talking about stars, so I intend to continue and don't forget to stay tuned as I have some exciting ideas in mind to share with you all. Anyway, back to Rigel. In 2016, the largest star of the system was designated with Rigel as its proper name. Due to its stellar wind, Rigel's mass loss is estimated to be 10 million times that of the Sun. With an estimated age of 7 to 9 million years, Rigel has now exhausted its core hydrogen fuel, expanded and cooled to become a supergiant. The Rigel A star is generally the seventh brightest star in the night sky, and it is occasionally outshone by Betelgeuse, which varies over a larger range. This means Rigel was officially designated as Beta Orionis due to the fact it was actually dimmer at the time of recording than Betelgeuse. Normally though, Rigel is the brightest star in Orion. The Rigel system is normally only really considered as Rigel A, the main star, but its companions make it into a quadruple star system. The famous novel The Other Berlin Girl reminds me much of Rigel, because the other Rigel stars have a combined apparent magnitude of 6.7, making them collectively 1 400th as bright as Rigel A. Two stars in the system can be seen by large telescopes, and the brighter of the two is actually a spectroscopic binary itself. This means it was discovered by the radio velocity method, much like we discover exoplanets, and that can't actually be distinguished by telescopy. The three stars, Rigel BA, BB and C, are all large stars in their own right, blue-white main sequence stars, each three to four times as massive as the Sun. Rigel A and its companions orbit a common centre of gravity with a period estimated to be around 24,000 years. Rigel B's projected separation from Rigel A is around 2,200 astronomical units. The inner stars of the triple system, BA and BB, orbit each other every 10 days. And remember, these are the ones that were the spectroscopic binary. And the outer star, C, orbits the inner pair every 63 years. This begs an interesting question as to what potential habitable zone for Rigel might look like. In this graphic, we see my own calculations estimating that the Rigel habitable zone extends out to as much as 1,000 astronomical units. It is widely thought the sweet spot, though, or Earth-like area, could potentially be around 346.4 astronomical units. And at this distance, a year length would be roughly 1,350 Earth years. But it obviously could vary greatly, depending on many factors, perhaps most important of which being the light received from the Rigel has an effect on the strength of ice albedo feedback in the climate of planets. It's possible that around a blue giant, that more of the blue-white radiating light would be reflected back into space than for a star like our Sun, say. So this hypothetical planet could very well be an irradiated snowball. In the Southern Hemisphere, Rigel is the first bright star of Orion visible as the constellation rises, and correspondingly it's also the first star of Orion to set in most of the Northern Hemisphere. Interestingly, the star is a vertex of the Winter Hexagon, and this is an asterism that includes Aldebaran Capella, Pollux Procyon and Sirius. It's quite an astonishing sight. It seems quite fascinating for us to consider that so many of the brightest stars in our sky lie in and around the Winter Hexagon which incidentally is actually on the freeway out of the Milky Way from our perspective. The Rigel system's spectral type is typical for late B-class stars, and its radial velocity, meaning how fast it is approaching or disappearing from our Sun, has been measured around a mean of around 21.5 km a second, meaning that Rigel is slowly making its way away from our solar system, but it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Contrast this, of course, with some fast-moving stars with respect to the Sun, like Caprain's star, 
which is positively streaking away from us at 245 kilometers a second, or the more famous Barnard star, which is approximating our solar system, this time at minus 110 kilometers a second, and the minus denotes that it's coming towards us. As you might expect for such a massive star, Rigel's mass loss rate due to stellar wind is extraordinary, and about 10 million times more than the mass loss rate for the Sun. The wind is thought to have a terminal velocity of around 300 km a second, and it's estimated that Rigel has lost as much as three solar masses since beginning a life as a star of around 25 solar masses, some 7 to 9 million years ago. The fellow Orion stars of Betelgeuse and Saif lie at a similar distance from the Sun to Rigel, although Betelgeuse is actually a runaway star. In our constellation series, we did look at what we might expect to see from a planet that was more nearby these three stars, and I'll link that in the card above, and don't forget to check that one out. Given that Rigel A has exhausted its hydrogen fuel, it is a blue supergiant that has expanded and cooled, and moved away from the main sequence across the upper part of the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. When it was on the main sequence, its effective temperature would actually have been an astonishing 30,000 Kelvin. Indeed, the fraction of helium at the surface of Rigel these days is estimated to have increased from around 26.6% when the star formed, to around 32% now. Rigel is expected to eventually end its stellar life as a Type 2 supernova, as you may know, and it's one of the closest known potential supernova candidates to Earth. Amazingly, if it were to actually go supernova, don't worry because we'd be safe enough, but Rigel would be expected to have a maximum apparent magnitude of around minus 11 around the same brightness as a quarter moon, or around 300 times brighter than Venus ever gets. In the end, the supernova would leave behind either a black hole or a neutron star. In the sitcom The Simpsons, Kang and Kodos identified Rigel 7 as their home planet. Many of us know that Rigel is a variable star, and indeed it's actually considered an Alpha Cygni type star, which unsurprisingly corresponds to the Titan star of Deneb, also known of course as Alpha Cygni, the prototype star for this kind of brightness variability. What many of us don't know though, is that it shares its space with three other large stars in their own right. The most luminous star of all in our local 1000 light year area. Rigel is a star that many young stargazers look up to, and wonder why they see this bright blue twinkling in the bottom right corner of Orion. Its marvel and beauty, however, does not diminish as we get older. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description below. If you have any videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below, it could just be your idea that shows up. Thanks for those of you that have already contributed coffees to the channel, and take good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.